Well, howdy, folks. Back here at the theater. Gonna go see Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, so catch you on the flip side. <clears throat> yours. I want to protect mine. It's our only chance for peace. Are you aware? No! They are going to turn on you. They're animals! Caesar, it's your own. Who was that? A good man like you. Caesar love humans more than apes. If you threaten his family, he will retaliate. Don't shoot! Don't you move! Should we shoot him? Maybe. Oh, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, you want a drink? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Alright. Easy. Easy. Alright. What are you doing? I'm saving the human race. <laughs> Military! They're already on their way! Caesar, you have to go. Go where? This my home. I'm sorry, my friend. War has begun. Caesar! So I just got out of seeing Rise or Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I'm sorry, I almost said Rise, which is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is the sequel to Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Now I I apologize if I sound a little strange. I do have a little bit of a head cold going on, but uh, it's all right. This movie was a very good movie. Um, if you are a very, if you are a fan of the Planet of the Apes movies at all, you would like this movie, uh, really. Um, except for the one with Marky Mark in it. <laughs> Tell you what, Marky Mark's on a roll, isn't he? Transformers, and he does the... Never mind. <laughs> but this film, uh, I couldn't um, tell you any of the stars in it, but except for Andy Serkis, who... Um, you know, was in the first film, and or the, the, the he was in uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and um, this film is directed by this time uh, Matt Reeves, who did Cloverfield, and um, I gotta say he did a really good job with this movie. the The whole premise was like a flashback to. Uh, there's a lot of references to the old Planet of the Apes series. Especially the fifth film, which is the least popular one. And uh, the least popular one was Battle for the Planet of the Apes. And uh, this film referenced that pretty much um, because there's a lot of things with ape never kill ape and um, there's a lot of references to uh, you know the, the the peace between you know that there's automatically friction between the humans and the the apes and uh, 
the apes obviously don't want anything to do with the humans. And Caesar, from the first film, he's concerned about the humans wanting to start a war. Well, his suspicions are not entirely correct. He believes, first off, that humans are going to start the war and the apes are going to fight to the death. That's not entirely, as the story goes on, he finds out that the apes are just as uh, subject to this fall as the humans are. So, and they have this one character, there, there's a villain character, human, and then there's a villain character of ape. So, it's on both sides. And it's really about, you know, when the, the original Planet of the Apes movie was started, two things was going on in the society back in 1968. This is just to give you a little bit of history about the Planet of the Apes series. Uh, the the original story is based on a book by the by an author by the name of Pierre Buell, who uh, wrote this book called Monkey Planet. And uh, the basically was the in this book he had a futuristic society where the apes were the one running the government, the ones in control, running the vehicles, running the, the gun, while the humans were the, the animals, were the slaves. But then when the film rights was purchased by 20th Century Fox, Fox said, uh, we can't afford to do this, so let's make them a primitive tribe of apes. And so the whole apes when you watch the first film, it's very primitive, there's no electricity, it's very old-fashioned, but the apes still behave like animals, but they're humanized. Uh, they do have a little bit of a culture, a little bit of social society, but there's no electricity. They don't use, the, the technology they use is very pad and paper, uh, rock, and uh, hammer, and things like that because 20th Century Fox at the time could not afford to do a modern ape society like we are now well like what we live in now with just with apes they couldn't afford to do that and uh, the whole and once that got a, uh, got established Fox said well let's make the apes very um Make it, make the whole story about the Cold War, communism, and uh, and racism, as basically put it. So, when you watch the first Planet of the Apes film, there's a, you know, there's a, definitely there's references to a threat of communism and the threat to, you know. Uh, they don't like each other because one species is a different species. Now here, it's pretty much the same thing. That, uh, but uh, they don't uh, come out blatantly and say this is about racism or whatever. And uh, of course, we're not in the Cold War anymore. And this, these two stories. The Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes are supposed to be the, the prequels that's leading up to the original Charlton Heston film. Uh, the difference being um, is that they're not telling why the NASA or whoever sent the astronauts through space and time. It's it's telling the story about what happened in that period, how the apes took over the planet Earth. Big spoiler, in case you haven't seen the original movie. 
that the apes that they're going through time they don't go to a to a foreign planet they stay on planet earth and that uh, you find out that something happened that all the humans died rose up and uh, took over the planet now in this film this shows how the war has begun uh, it takes place 10 years later after the after the film Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, the James Franco character is not in this. We're to assume that he's dead because they go on at the if you watch the end of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, they talk about the virus. They briefly show that the virus has started. It started with one man, then two at the tail end and then um, this film shows that the virus has spread all throughout the world people have died off and the, what's left are the people who are immune and so that brings it to you know where the film starts off and uh, you know just a really good film uh, like I said if you are a fan of the original series I would definitely check this out uh, even though it's not uh, makeup and prosthetics it's all CGI but it's really well done CGI it's it's wet a digital they do they've done a really good job at showing this or doing the visual effects and um, just really good film uh, you know the film is you know goes back it references to the classic film in the in the classic series so because they know that's part of the, the whole saga and you can't have this story without that story so and the film definitely tells you about how it all is started so from me to you see you later